You are the best. You take care. All right. All right. We're going to come so, back in a moment to... This is just an old temple. St. George Temple is built in the 18... Uh, what? 50s? 60s? 60s, 70s. So they're remodeling it. That's all new. In the front, the little part. Back here, they've torn it down and gotten it down to the... To where that's... Well, it wasn't white. It was uh, sandstone colored. And they, you know, whitewashed it. But you can see parts of it that are original. And the top has been made original there was uh, Angel Moroni up there he's gone but it looks like they filled in a little more a lot more on the bottom just since the week ago when I was here because they're retrofitting all these pioneer temples like this one there's one at Manti, Utah. There's one at Logan. Logan, they're not doing. Because they kind of did it 20 years ago. But they're going to do something. But all of these, they're going way down to the base and under. And then putting like mini piles steel with uh, steel sleeves and, and uh, concrete poured in and then the base is connected to that so this thing could stand like a it's like 11 times more uh, than what it's supposed to for as far as earthquakes so it could handle a really big earthquake so on top you've got the weather vane which Was that always up there, or didn't they have a, an angel on that one? Or did they keep it, like, similar to, uh... Because that's kind of what... That Kirtland, but, uh... Nauvoo had... Well, they had an angel flying, I think, or... I don't know. But they've made the spire, which when they first made it they didn't want to make it that high so they made it like eh, 10 feet high and it was stumpy and Brigham Young came down and said don't like it you gotta make it twice as high or higher and they're like oh we'll have to take it all down and do it because I don't told you what to do you know because of course he got inspiration from somebody from right that guy in there see well, that's actually not him, but, you know, you know what I'm saying. Look, Jesus Christ. The people that are always shocked to find out that we, that's who we, uh, actually. The Church of Jesus Christ. Latter-day Saints. Not Mormons. No more. No more Mormon. No more Latter-day Saint. Nothing. It's... That's what we're called, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's long, but that's what... So here is a better shot. Wow, that's really cool in that window. In that window. Because you can see inside, and they've gone all the way to, uh, you know, cut it back to where... Uh, it was when they built it. But they're doing a... I think this is a two or three year restoration. I don't know that tweaker's doing walking around. It could be a guard, I don't know. Looks like a tweaker though. Probably walking around. Wondering why he messed up his life. A lot of, you know, there's a drug problem there. There's a drug problem in every small town. Because if you don't, you know, aren't doing what's right, and you get off path, and blah, blah, blah. What else are you going to do? That's why you got to keep on straight and narrow. It may be boring at times, but if you do what's right, you won't be bored. Like, you know, have a family and everything. 
that's pretty cool that they've gone down so the steps those are I mean the steps have been there but you know I can't remember this was my temple for four years when I lived up here I had to drive from Cedar to the city down here you know all you it's like what this isn't about the guitars this isn't about the scenery no it's about an old building that was that's a hundred and something years old like I said it was built in like the 1850s my ancestors helped build it and worked there so yeah I think it was started in yeah because it took 40 years to build Salt Lake Temple so like from 40 whatever from 50 to 90 so 1850 1890 so this was probably started around 1850 something I can't remember the dates I used to know it all but uh, eh, not so much no so all that is the new part you know the little part and it's supposed to blend seamlessly into the older part I just like to see the old stuff it's, but so I'm in St. George I got here really early like 6.30 and there's nothing to do here and I figured well I'll go bug my uh, cousin but I uh, started watching uh, some stupid Star Wars thing the Han Solo one there's so many of them now that I haven't seen most of them and then I uh, fell asleep and then I'm like oh the credit's midnight well actually on my computer it's still California time so holy crud it's 11.30 so I got dressed and I figured I'd come down here and video the temple tonight uh don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I know I'm going to uh, load up on ammo because I'm in Utah and I can just walk into a big five and buy as much as I want. And it's, you know, it's fine. Where in Californication, you got to, it's like buying a gun. You've got to register to buy the ammo. There's a waiting period. Look at a wilderness trailer. That's almost like the one that my dad got rid of. It was that size, pretty much. Just uh, the 70s model. That's a newer one. Ours was bigger in the back. We had eight beds. One, two. So, so one, two, three, four beds in the back. And then two beds in the front that slept two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people could sleep in there. Then the bathroom, a kitchen, a very big kitchen, and closet, two closets. It was cool. I mean, uh, he kept it at his parents' house, but then when his parents sold their house, he didn't have a place to put it. He didn't want to put it in storage, so I said, I'll build a ramp in the backyard, but I'll have to knock down. Go ahead, do it. So I knocked down the wall. It was like a two or three foot wall in the back uh, yard that was uh, so we could get it in through the alley. That was the only way, and then I got railroad ties, put them in my truck, brought them there, and put and made a ramp, just a really crude ramp. Got the friggin' trailer there, started to back it in, and then found out it's not gonna happen. We can't just back it in with a truck. So we disconnected it from the truck and me and like five or six of my friends literally picked it up and rolled it down and 
I don't know how the hell we did it without killing somebody or b destroying the trailer. And, but we got it in there and parked it perfect. And uh, when me and my which girl, girl, I think it was Yvette, yeah. She, uh, well, we got, you know, booted out of our, our apartment in Whittier. So, the kids, where did her kids go? Her kids went to live with the dad. And we decided we were going to live in Burbank. And I'm like, I, you know, I'm not, can't live in the house because I didn't want my son to know I was living in sin. But he, yeah, like he wouldn't figure out that I was living in the trailer, but whatever. He knew. He was about five. Anyway, so we lived in the trailer for about six or seven months. And I just ran a cord out there for the power and... Uh, we had water, but we couldn't use the, uh, you know, the toilet because how are we going to dump the, so we had to use the bathroom to go to take a shower, but otherwise we had water, we had, we could cook in there, uh, there was propane, two propane tanks, but then those went out, and so we just did Bunsen burner oh yeah and got a microwave out there so we were set I moved my stereo out there I remember it was what was the summer of 80 80 or I mean 90 91 I think it was 91 because I was getting ready to like see a fatal attraction and uh yeah, because, like, you got to dye your hair black again, because we're going to do... I'm like, look, we're not even wearing makeup anymore. This this band is going nowhere now. Because all our songs are about vampires. So, yeah, it was all... Uh, I had been uh, partaking of the uh, drink. <laughs> And they called, and I told them where to go, and that was it. Like, so, you know, band meeting, band meeting. I'm like, have the band meeting without me. I'm done. Goodbye. And I was out. And they got another bass player, and they played, you know, some bars and crap for a couple months, and then they broke up, and that was it. Because what are you going to do? Well, the whole band is centered around vampires so when you're not a vampire anymore and we're just and you know we're trying to grow our and our you had a little eye makeup on but you know we're like growing stubble and trey shaved his head and he had a mohawk but it looked really stupid and uh you know but that was our image everything was so it was like he tried to, you know, so everything is dead. Like dead on arrival, dead this, you, you know, blah, 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 you got to bleed. None of it made sense. So we started going back to my old lyrics from Stiletto, and I know what I want, I know how to get it, which is about girls. And we were going to do Drunk and Disorderly, but we didn't. We did, I don't know what, yeah, we're just saying dead means cool, like, dude, that's so dead. Yeah, that caught on. No. Yeah, it was embarrassing. It was weird, though, because, like, literally, a few months, you know, before, we're selling out all the clubs in California that we played, and then six months later, we're, we can't even put, you know, 50 people into a little club in the valley or a bar really see this used to be an airport so I just drove up so you can see the whole city of St. George Utah Bountiful or whatever that's called down there Bloomington and Washington over there where my good old buddy Brian Church lives and 
and there's a temple that we just saw. So up here on this mesa, because there's several mesas, there's one over there, there's one over there. On that one, they put a bunch of houses that are way overpriced, but very cool. And up here was an airport, and it was a trip to take off and land, because you're like, holy crap, they've got to make this, you know, landing. Well, they, I haven't been up here since they tore the airport out, so they still haven't done anything. They're just now building stuff. So, so they moved the airport down over, over there somewhere, which that way is Arizona, and that way, so straight down is Arizona, and that way is Nevada. Uh, you know, 15. So, I don't know why they pulled it off this mesa. I think they want you were going to make a bigger, a bigger strip. But all they got is old buildings from the airport up here. I don't know what they're doing with them. Not much. They had a really cool restaurant. It's probably back there, but the, like, no, it can't be because the road stops. <laughs> So there was a restaurant that, it was a really cool, it's a hotel restaurant thing, and you could, uh, oh, this was your view. It's like everybody wanted that one. I thought I stayed there once. And I know they wanted to build houses up here further and further, and so, you know, they got this far. But, you know, they were worried about planes and all that crap, so they moved the planes. So, maybe this is the restaurant. Nope, this is a house. That's ridiculous having a house. I mean, you'd think, that's a, like $5 million. No, that's like about three or $400,000. Probably about $400,000. Depends. It all depends. But, I mean, you could get huge like that big gigantic mansion thing up there you can't really see it but yeah that's all under 500 some of them are I mean there's some up here that are like five or six hundred thousand because the you know everybody from California that retires and comes up here and they always buy houses in the you know fall and winter when the weather is perfect and then in the summer, they're like, oh my gosh, because it's as hot as hell. It's just as hot, it gets just as bad here as it does in Vegas, which is about an hour and a half away from here. So, then everybody's like, oh, what do we do? We bought a house. A lot of people I know that moved to Vegas have tried to move back to California, but California is so out of control now, price-wise and tax-wise and everything else-wise, that they just, oh, forget it, and they move. And, you know, people get mad, like, when did you like get up you and you move out? Believe me, I'd want to move out. But there's reasons why I can't, so up there... Is Snow Canyon, and apparently that's where my aunt and uncle have are having a house built. Poor people, they don't have any money. Now, my uncle's a good guy. He's very smart. I think I talked about him, Professor. So, you know, he worked a while, and he taught everywhere, and he deserves the money he made. The thing is, is my aunt got sick and apparently I thought she didn't have that long to live and I went to see her in a hospice in 2017 to say basically you know bye love you blah 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 well 2020 she's still here they're moving up here my mom's gone see if my mom's gone everybody else's has got to go I'm just joking of course they don't, but it trips me out because, you know, on my dad's side, they're not known for their longevity. They usually make it into the 80s, and then, boop, 
70s, 80s, bonk. Unless they're ones that lived up here, like my one aunt, Nelene. I think she was in her 90s when she, yeah, she was in her 90s. But I think her and the youngest, because all my grandma's sisters are gone now. So it's Gladys, my grandma, Gladys, Batty, Ethel, uh, Aunt Nelene, and Sylvia. And they're all gone now. So, and they were all born and raised in Tokerville, which I didn't go to this year, but there's the tabernacle. I've gone in there and listened to a few lectures and some singing, but I don't like, you know, singing is not my thing. That's the old courthouse. Been there for a million years. Brigham Young's winter home is up there. So, you know, during the winter, he'd, you know, get in his buggy and it'd be like a, like a tour. He'd hit all the towns all the way down. Basically the 15. All those little towns, but it would, you know, he'd meander in and out over to the 89. is another highway and Hit all the towns, make sure everybody's behaving themselves, and then uh, stay down here. I think he lived into his late 70s. So yeah, he was saying, you know, you've got to make that tower on the temple higher. And they were like, well, it's going to take a lot of work. He's like, I don't care, do it. So he, he died. And two weeks later... Lightning struck the tower and burnt it down right to the base. And they're like, wow, he's getting his way even in death. So, there you go. There's a little uh, story there for you. Not that, you know, many people will care. I also found out that Alice Cooper, his dad, whose name was Ether Moroni Fernier. That's two names in the Book of Mormon. I'm big names. Ether and Moroni. Moroni is that angel you see blowing the horn on the temples if you know anything about Mormons. That's Moroni. That was Alice Cooper's dad's middle name. His first name was Ether, which is a prophet in the Book of Mormon. And his brother was named Mahanrai, who was another uh, I don't think he was a prophet, no, because it was a brother of Jared. Yeah, Mahanrai. It was the brother of Jared. Jared is. But in the Book of Mormon, they didn't know the name. They, they couldn't translate it, but Joseph Smith. You know, you, this is probably extremely thrilling for everybody that's not Mormon. 225s. Look at that. 225 for gas here. I've spent under a hundred dollars on this trip so far. Ten days I've been gone as of midnight. And under a hundred dollars and I've gone two thousand miles almost. Wow. Uh is this my turn? Yeah, because I'm up here. I usually go to Denny's, but since it's like, you know, they're turning into California all of a sudden because there is a huge spike. No. Turns out someone did some uh, snooping in the records and there is absolutely no spike in the hospitalizations of people with COVID. It's the testing. It's because more testing is being done. So more people are testing positive, but they're not sick. I've had it. My sister's kid has it. He tested positive. That's two people in my family. Yeah, I had it March 8th. And I uh, was sick for two weeks. They gave me pro antibiotics and uh, done. And I have one lung. So, I'm sure I have not told that story 1,000 times. But, you know, like my sister, she was all, yeah, you got sick me. Well, her son gets sick, and it's fine that he never quarantined himself. 
he's just, uh, well, like, one, he's going to college, so how are you going to do that? College kids aren't going to do anything crazy, like, quarantine themselves. That's too... They're going to go out and party. But, uh, anyways, yeah, he's going to school in North Carolina, so, you know, if you're not in California, you can... If you're not in California or New York, you can live a normal life. You know, peep, there's people that wear masks and there's people that don't wear masks. Most people don't. I haven't put the mask on the whole time I've been here. Because I don't want to. It's great. It's It feels like I'm actually living in America where I'm free to choose what I do. It's amazing. But, uh, well, I'm back. Nice room. They gave me the, uh, a, uh, what do you call it? A handicap room. You know, because I got this. The plaque. Which gives me rock star parking. I mean, the thing is, is I'm fine. I can walk and everything. But now the knee that they replaced is fine. My real knee is going out. So I'm going to have to get that replaced. But not anytime soon. So there was your ride. How long did I talk? 26 minutes. That seems to be about the average. Alright, later. I'll probably do another video on the way home tomorrow. In the desert somewhere. Alright, bye.